Are you looking for a mini PC that's small and won't break the bank? Well, today we have a meal. Welcome to Team Pandora. Subscribble. A package arrived, this time from Meal. They're a company that specializes in silent mini PCs, and this one will be no different. So let's tap it open. Bubble wrap bag. Hmm. So here's the box, and it looks very similar to their quieter series. According to the side, it has an N100 chip, and we've covered many other computers that house the same processor. In the box, we're greeted to a postcard. Hmm. And here are the contents. We have the vase amount so we can attach to anything, mini PC, manual, and a 5 volt 2 amp power adapter supplying up to 24 watts. This fairly small mini PC is rather stylish. It's got a sticker here and a warning sticker over here. As this is a fanless mini PC, the case works like a heatsink. Heat from the inside gets pulled to the outside via the case itself, making it warm to touch while it's running. We have our power switch. And underneath we have labels and holes for the vase amount. According to the internet, these are USB 3.2, but the box says 3.0. We'll be sure to check it out. USB-C, good for up to 5 gigabits a second. And at the very end, Kensington. Kensington. Yes, Kensington. At the end we got two HDMI 2.0 ports, which should give us 4K at 60 Hz. And on the other end we have a 3.5mm audio jack, micro SD slot, in the center a 1 gigabit Ethernet LAN port, and USB-C for a power adapter, and this supports power delivery 3.0. Moving on to the specs, we have the Intel N100. We should have a pretty good experience in Windows, be capable of playing some of the lighter games, and expect PSP and even some PS2 emulation. There's 8GB of LPDDR4, so you won't be able to upgrade it. And we also have 1GB Ethernet and Wi-Fi 5, which could be a problem if you want the fastest network speeds. It's time for the size comparison. The PC Geo 2 Pro is far smaller than the G3. It's even smaller than this cutie, the Geekom A7. I don't know which is more powerful, but here's my phone. A Xiaomi Note 10 Pro. Nintendo Game Boy. A 3.5 inch floppy disk. Measuring tape. And a tea bag. This Roy Bosch tea bag is 2.5 times the size of... Um, uh, once combined with a monitor, keyboard, speakers and a trackball, we can turn it on and we're greeted to a few questions, such as what language to use, time zones, and things like that. Five minutes later, we're in Windows. All of the specifications do check out, but on the activation screen, it says that Windows can't connect. To sort this, we'll need to join an internet-ready network via Wi-Fi or LAN cable, and then the process is done automatically. We can then download some free software off ninite.com, and then we checked for viruses and malware, which reported that our system was clean. Then we updated Windows and our Intel drivers to the latest versions. As this is a Windows 11 PC, many of the usual things can be done on it, be it internet browsing or using Office for spreadsheets or writing a thesis. And while many tools like Canva are online, we can use 2D art packages like Krita natively on the PC. But if you need a computer to edit video, make music or create 3D art, this one is a little underpowered. Moving on to some video streaming, here's Amazon Prime, and it works for us without any issues in 1080p. And Netflix. And now YouTube in 4K, where we experience many drops. After we load the resolution to 1440p, everything smoothed out nicely. Moving to the benchmarks now, this computer underperforms, and it places dead last in the CPU scores, even getting beaten by the N95. And these poor scores continue with Time Spy, with the melee having half the CPU score that we were expecting. While the CPU temp stayed around 75 degrees, another element was throttling the system, be it from power or thermal throttling on the memory. Here's Dismark, and the scores for the drive are extremely poor, and it could be felt in Windows itself, as the snappiness just wasn't there. CPU temps were at 50 degrees idle, 75 under load, which is great for a system without a fan. At idle it pulls 3 to 4 watts from the wall, and if we put it under load, a bit more. Better look at the USB ports, and indeed they are 3.2, and then we tested out the Wi-Fi strength, and we're at an unacceptable 62%, and 
as the case is mostly made of metal, it would have made much more sense if the aerial was on the outside. Then we managed to connect our Bluetooth controller, and then play some games. Pac-Man CE2. We had to change resolution to 720p, we're getting around 40fps. Next up is Cuphead, 1080p, full speed. Dave the Diver at 1080p. But to get it much more playable, we had to lower resolution. The game we always like to test, Rocket League. And at 720p performance mode, this computer is really struggling. Then we tried Dota 2, and the performance is somewhat embarrassing. We are agreed. Attack! No, no, no. We ran the benchmark in Grid Autosport, and it's quite obvious here that some form of throttling is in play. The CPU temperature seems okay, but considering this chip should be good for up to 3.4 GHz, there is definitely a throttling issue with this PC. Let's move on to some emulation. Marvel vs Capcom 2, Redream, at full speed. And the same goes for Soul Calibur. Tekken 6 on the PSP, running wonderfully. And then we tried God of War Chains of Olympus. We started out with a good 60 FPS, and then this happened. As we're certain this game can run on the chipset, this is extremely disappointing. We then moved on to some PS2. Here's Gradius 5, running at two times native resolution. and Gran Turismo 4. If we keep an eye on the status bar at the top, we can see this runs into the same issues as Chains of Olympus. Looking at HWInfo 64, indeed the CPU was not thermal throttling, but power throttling. It tried to draw more power than the budget allows, which was probably set low to keep the computer cool, as it has no fans. Here's the BIOS we can see that it's extremely comprehensive, albeit overwhelming. It'd be nice if they could put the more important options, such as TDP limits, secure boot, boot order, and have the more advanced options separated for experts. It's just too much. We then tried our Batacera drive via USB, and it booted up without any issues. Batacera is a Linux distro focusing on emulation. We tested out Wi-Fi, and it found both our networks, and we could connect. But the signal was weak, so in order to see the shared partition, we needed to use the Ethernet LAN. We could use the Bluetooth controller, and that worked fine. But there was another issue that we stumbled across. Both the video and audio from the first HDMI port was all distorted. But if we use the second HDMI port, all clear. And at last, we can play some Atari ST. Commodore Amiga. Dreamcast. Come here. Good. Take me to the cable car. Okay, here we go. Here we go indeed with 40 FPS. So let's take a look inside. There are three screws on the back, which can be removed with a small posi driver. We can easily pull it apart like so. We have a thermal pad, and this pulls out heat from the backside of the CPU, and this heat is spread along this large sheet of metal. Here's the PCB, but the memory, CPU, and storage are on the other side. We can open it a little, but unless we remove a Wi-Fi antenna, we can only get so far. 
So we'll use a guitar pick to pry one out. Then we have full access to the board. You can see straight away they're using a very thick thermal paste that is only on the CPU. It's very easy to clean up with alcohol wipe. And we'll see if adding thermal pads and using MX4 thermal paste will make any difference. This may not help at all, but I'm at a point where I just simply don't care. So we have a few degrees lower in CPU temps, but these games still slow down. We thought that perhaps this computer could be used for camping, but unfortunately the output of my portable battery, which is 5 volt 2 amps, could not power this device. So I bought another one, and apparently we need something over 24 watts... Oh. It's about time for the pros and the cons. This computer is completely silent, it's portable and looks very nice. The power drawer is extremely low and it can be used as a hand warmer if you're cold. Unfortunately, the performance is extremely poor due to throttling. There are heat concerns regarding storage and memory, and for a product released in 2024, it's crazy that this computer uses many of the old standards, such as Wi-Fi 5, eMMC and HDMI 2.0. We did try to light this computer and even raise the power limits to 20 to 24 watts. And while it did improve our benchmark scores, it still lags behind the other M100 mini PCs. When it comes to gaming, Dota 2 played much better, but this performance was not constant as the computer was now being throttled by high CPU temperatures. When it comes down to it, this mini PC gets a similar performance to the quieter 3Q that we had on two years ago. And even with the slower N5105 chip, it ran everything much better out the box. Looking at the alternatives, there's a Zima board, which has a weaker processor, but it's ready to be used as a server for your network. And if you don't mind a fan in your system, the GMK Tech G3 is a cheap and cheerful mini PC that houses Wi-Fi 6 and an NVMe. Ultimately, we cannot recommend the PC Geo 2 Pro, but we hope that Melee can innovate and push the way forward with their next round of mini PCs. A summary. Dominant.